I'm realizing I've never given a formal introduction to myself on YouTube. I actually did years ago when I had a YouTube channel, which I just was not consistent on. I have <laughs> since archived like all of those videos, but today we are going to be talking all about me. <laughs> What's up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Ethan. I am a Los Angeles-based creative. On my social channels, I mostly make content about my home, as well as fragrance, my fragrance brand, personal style, beauty, kind of just like all the things in life that I think make me live a beautiful life. But today we are going to be talking about me. In order for us to really connect and have that sort of bond that I think that we need to have, you guys need to know who you're watching. This is my getting to know you video. So in this video, you guys are going to get to know a little bit about me. And then hopefully in the comments on social media through DMs, I can learn more about you. If you haven't already, be sure to follow my Instagram and TikTok where I post all things home style and beauty. Only I would be drinking hot coffee at three o'clock when the weather is like, oh, not a hundred degrees outside, but it's pretty hot. It's like, I want to say probably like 85, 90. I hope it though. I'm addicted to the bean. Oh, that just went all over my bedding. Things we do for YouTube videos, I guess. Speaking of which, today's video was sponsored by Parachute. Just kidding, it's not. Um, <laughs> I wish, that'd be, that'd be nice. I'm gonna run and get more coffee and then we'll get started. Be right back. So question number one, what is your full name? My full name is Ethan Christian Gaskill. I used to really dislike my name, but throughout my life, I have learned to appreciate it a lot. As you can imagine, having the last name Gaskill, uh, kids in elementary and middle school had a heyday with that, amongst many other things I was bullied for as a kid. So that's a whole other topic. But yeah, one time I was working on a set for a TV show and I happened to bump into the director and he was like, who are you? And I was like, oh, I'm just one of the camera PAs. And he goes, oh really, what's your name? And I was like scared. I was literally like, oh my God, am I about to get like kicked off the set? Even though I was like a fully like employed like worker, like meant to be there. Um, I was like, my name is Ethan. And he was like, Ethan what? And I go, uh, my Ethan Gaskill, my name's Ethan Gaskill. And he was like, hmm. Ethan Gaskill, that's a famous name. And ever since he said that, I don't even know who this man is to be honest with you. Cause like on TV, always so many different directors. And I just know he was kind of scary, but I don't know, just like something about what he said really spoke to me. So yeah, I like my name now. <laughs> All right, question two, how old am I? I am 29 years old. These are really basic questions. I guess I didn't realize how little there would be to elaborate on with a lot of these questions. So <laughs> I'm 29 years old. I actually just celebrated my 29th birthday. It was on July 6th. That actually leads us into the next question, which is what is my zodiac sign? My birthday is July 6th, so I'm a Cancer. But for anyone out there who's really into astrology, I also, can tell you my birth chart really quick <laughs> because a lot of people find that super interesting. I know I do. I actually find it really interesting. I am a Cancer Sun, Gemini Moon, and Taurus Rising. I'm also a Leo Venus. Okay, they're doing yard work outside now, so we're gonna try to wait that out for just a second. <laughs> While we're waiting, I'm gonna light a candle. Let's do this one, which is vacation by vacation, cause it smells like the beach and I don't go to the beach. <laughs> this smells so good. It has notes of coconut water, coconut milk, banana, pineapple, pool water, swimsuit, lycra, and sea salt. I'm just gonna put this back here. Okay. Okay, it sounds like they've chilled out, so let's get back into the video. We were waiting for the landscapers to finish up. I decided to post on my Instagram story and ask everyone on there what they wanted me to answer on here. So we're gonna get to those in just a bit. The next question is, what is your height? I am, I like to say 6'2 on a bad day because I'm technically 6'3", but there's this part of me that fears someone coming up and like measuring how tall I am and being like, you're not actually 6'3". I'd rather say I'm a little shorter than I actually am than say I'm taller and then have someone like come for me for that. So I'm 6'2", or 6'3". So yeah, I'm 6'2". 
You know what, I'm 6'3". <laughs> All right, where are you from and where do you live? I am originally from the coast of North Carolina. I grew up and spent all of my life in a small beach town called Wilmington, and it's very relaxed, it's sort of historic, it's a cute place. A great place to grow up, I think. For me, being as creative and open-minded as I am, I really wanted to be somewhere that just offered so much more and enabled me to connect with a lot more creative people, which I feel bad saying because there are a lot of creative people back home, but I knew that for myself. I just needed to be somewhere bigger, which kind of ties into the next part of this question, which is where do you live now? I am based in Los Angeles, California. I live dead center in central LA, which honestly is a lot. It can be really overwhelming, but you know, I knew what I signed up for. LA is a very magical place. There's a lot of opportunity here and a lot of very creative people. And honestly, Los Angeles is really beautiful. Like the architecture here, the way that you can be like in the mountains, but then see the ocean. PCH feels like something out of a movie. It's a great place to live. I don't think it's gonna be my forever home, but it's definitely a place that I will be at for as long as I am doing the work that I do now, so. Yeah. All right, where did you go to college and what did you major in? I went to Cape Fear Community College back in Wilmington, where I'm from. This particular community college was really well respected in terms of the film industry that we have locally where I'm from. Apparently the studios that are based in Wilmington tend to work closely with the people at the community college. The film program was like super hands-on. So because of that, they just knew that a lot of the students from the community college program were like very technically savvy. It was the most fun. It was a two-year program. And I think so fondly back on that time because life was just so carefree. Like I got to work out at coffee shops and write really cool film scripts and produce projects. For a long time, I wanted to work in film and specifically in the horror genre. That's like my favorite type of movies and books and all those things. Like I love scary, dark stuff. So I was gonna do that for what I thought would be the rest of my life. And then I actually got out on set and realized I didn't like it that much because it just wasn't as creative as I wanted it to be. And I just found myself, I don't know, like as a PA, you kind of get thrown in the back to just make sure like nobody walks by this area. And I was like, I want to be in the director tent. <laughs> like I've got to be in there like calling shots and setting up the angles and like helping make big creative decisions. Like I, I get it, you have to like work your way up. But I realized really quickly that that industry probably was not the one for me to do what I wanted to do and to be as creative as I really wanted to be. So I did out and said, I'm gonna go do my own thing. I've been doing my own thing ever since. <laughs> the next question is, what is your biggest fear? So I can answer this from like a funny, very surface level kind of perspective, but I can also answer this from a very deep, very real perspective. So from just like a funny, like surface level, like, oh yeah, that's scary type of a thing. The ocean is terrifying to me. Like the concept of being out in the middle of the ocean and just like floating in the water and not knowing what's under you literally sounds so scary. I, I think just any environments where I feel like I don't have control, the whole idea of just not knowing where you are, what's under you is genuinely so terrifying. But if we want to be very real for a second about what my actual biggest fear is in life, I think it's to be at the end of my life and feel like I didn't contribute in a significant way to something. And the way that I've always felt that I was meant to contribute to society is more in like a creative or artistic manner. The idea of just being at the end of my life and feeling like I kind of settled or coasted along or never really did something that would like make me a memorable person, that's really scary to me. And I can go way deeper into this topic, but for the sake of keeping this lighthearted and fun, I'm not going to. I can't think of anything scarier than those two things. All right, on a much lighter note, what is your go-to coffee drink? This depends on the time of year and my mood because I can just drink straight black coffee, iced, hot. I tend to like a hot coffee in the morning and then maybe like an iced coffee later in the day. I'm not partial to drip coffee versus espresso. I have a drip coffee machine, which I love, so I tend to drink a lot more drip coffee, which is what I'm drinking now. But yeah, just really simple coffee. I can tell you what I don't like, and that is watery coffee, and also coffee that's too milky or too sweet. 
And if it's a combination of the three of them, get that away from me. Like I can't think of anything actually worse than that. Maybe that's actually my biggest fear is coffee that's watery, too sweet, and way too milky. <laughs> that actually, that's it. Okay, next question is, what is your favorite food? I, I don't really have a favorite food, to be honest. I do have a favorite cuisine, and that is Mexican. I could eat tacos or burritos or any of that type of food. Chips and really good salsa. I love homemade salsa. I can't get enough of it. Even if it just comes down to like some good rice and like fajita chicken and some like sauteed onions that is amazing but I, I like i just the whole spectrum of mexican food i can't get enough of all right next question is what is your favorite color my favorite color is probably green if i actually had to pick a color i really love brown and black i wear a lot of black but i do love the color brown because it kind of reminds me of coffee which is like my favorite thing so i would say green is my favorite color but really close to that is brown and black. Okay, what is my favorite movie? I actually made a list recently of my favorite films. I'm gonna grab that and just read it off. Like I said earlier, I do really love horror films. So <laughs> most of these are kind of scary movies. Um, here is, oh, you can't see this. My favorite films in no particular order, The Strangers, Hereditary, I'm Thinking of Ending Things, Past Lives, Spring Breakers, Midsummer, Jennifer's Body, Bridesmaids, Mother, Her, Gone Girl, Black Swan, Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2, 30 Days of Night, the first Scream movie, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and then also The Conjuring. I'm sure there are more. Like I love like the Star Wars series and love the Hunger Games but thinking of more standalone films, I just really love those a lot. I am just in general much more of a movie guy over like a TV show person. If you have any good movie recommendations, definitely drop a comment and let me know. Okay, I wanna answer some of these questions that have come in from Instagram, so we're gonna get into this. Okay, this person asked, what do you do for your workout routine? I love boxing, and more recently, I really love hot yoga. I've always loved hot yoga, but I've just recently started picking it back up, and it's so good for your like mind and body, and just, strengthening like all of the smaller muscle groups I feel like. I also love to get a good sweat in. So hot yoga is great for that. And then if I'm not doing hot yoga or boxing, I would say some sort of like cardio, like running or hiking, I really enjoy. And strength training, I should do more of, but it just feels so slow to me. When I'm doing like a class or something that I'm more involved with like a collective group of people or I'm being like told what to do, I just, it tends to like go by way quicker and I like that a lot. And then I normally work out like three to four days a week. I would love to of course work out more, but with life, I tend to not always do that. And I also only work out in the evening. I hate working out in the mornings, so I don't ever work out in the morning. I like slow mornings. Okay, this is a really good one. Are you a full-time content creator or do you have other jobs? My primary source of income is my marketing business, which is called Insight Social. And Insight Social is a social media management and marketing agency where we basically help businesses that are are, you know, in like the consumer space or predominantly like product-based companies. We help them market on Instagram and TikTok and create content. We actually manage all their content calendars, their captions, influencer relations, and like all those different things. And I have been doing that business now for going on six years, which is kind of crazy. Time has really flown, but that company has been really life-changing for me because it's allowed me to work with really cool businesses, meet really amazing people. It's taught me everything I need to know about the marketing space, the influencer space, but specifically like from a brand perspective, like how they look at influencers and creators. And also through my marketing company, I've been able to completely self-fund my fragrance brand, which is called Elsewhere. I will attach a screenshot of it right here. If you guys don't know, Elsewhere is my fragrance brand. It is my passion project. It's not even a year old yet. Basically we make home fragrances and of course eventually we'll make personal fragrances. It's essentially a project of mine that just came out of a place of really wanting to exercise my creativity so much more. So everything from like the copywriting to the visuals to the product development, like all that, I was involved in every step of that process and got to work with and like hand select the coolest people to help bring the whole vision to life. It is a really new business, so it by no means is 
paying all my bills, but um, it is something that I am so proud of. I have a lot of really exciting things that we're working on right now within that brand. So if you're interested in it, definitely check the link below in the like description box and I will include details so you can follow us on social media or check out our website. And then the last component to my career is the content creator aspect of things where I really hate to use the term influencer, but where I kind of utilize TikTok, Instagram, and more recently YouTube to connect with people, build an online community, and really just talk about all of the things that I care about, which most always fall into the subject of like style, home or beauty. I really just love the work that I do with this because it kind of allows me to be expressive and showcase all the things that I really love and am passionate about and connect with you guys who watch the content and um, are also really interested in those things. So my work in relation to being a content creator is relatively new for me. Like in terms of doing it as a paid thing, I have not really been doing brand deals for a majority of the time that I've been posting. It's only as of like three months ago, I started doing brand deals and I'm trying to be pretty selective with who I work with and the work that I take on because you of course want to make sure that it's a good fit and the brands that you work with align with your values. And so it's kind of like one of those things that, you know, you want to make money from it, but you also like want it to make sense and like be authentic to you. So yeah. And I also just signed with Wilhelmina with their social media division of Wilhelmina, which is called Willy Social. Really excited about that. That's crazy to me that I am now represented. They're amazing. They've been already so good in helping me work with and connect with new brands that I've never worked with before and kind of just understand my value more as a content creator, uh, which is really cool. My marketing agency, my fragrance brand, and then my content creator work are the three things that I do as a job. So as you can imagine, I'm busy. I'm just always doing stuff, <laughs> but I don't think I'd have it any other way. So I'm very thankful to be where I am. Okay. Okay, someone asks, what is your favorite cereal? I would have to say Golden Grahams is my favorite. I never treat myself to cereal because it's literally terrible for you, but <laughs> it's good for your spirit. And I, I should probably let myself have it more often, but I love Golden Grahams. I like Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Um, I feel like there's another one I'm forgetting. Maybe that's a Golden Grahams and Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Yeah, we're gonna go with those. It sounds really good. Some of these questions are so ridiculous. Okay, what are you most looking forward to right now? That is a really good question. I would say what I'm looking forward to most right now is probably one, the launch of our newest scent for Elsewhere. We've been working on it now for about four months or so, maybe going on five months. And then additionally, just this new chapter with content creation and being signed now with Wilhelmina. It all feels kind of scary and unknown to me. I don't really know what to expect, but I'm very excited to see the opportunities that will show up and present themselves. Okay, the next question is, what is my favorite thing to do in my free time? Anytime I am not working, I really like to try my best to disconnect. So just get off of my phone, my computer, if I can grab a book or be outside or maybe take time to go on like a hike or connect with nature in some way, I really love to do that. and. Honestly, like it wasn't until I moved to Los Angeles that I felt this desire to really like unplug. I think just being here, I don't know if it's the nature of how my work has evolved or the city itself, but there is this kind of like calling for me to really pull back. I love going to the farmer's market. I like going on walks. My roommate and I will go on walks sometimes to the Grove, which is up the street from us, and we'll go see a movie. And it's kind of fun to like walk there, go see the movie and then walk back. <clears throat> yeah, I think really just connect with nature, connect with friends or at minimum just connect with myself. It kind of just depends on where I am in that period of free time. Sometimes when I'm at the house, I'll just rearrange everything just to see how it looks. <laughs> I think in my free time, I also really love to be creative and to go out and get inspired. So that's a thing that I do too. Sometimes I'll go to the bookstore and just look at like really beautiful coffee table books. I love to go to cafes and just sit and enjoy coffee and people watch. Basically just take it easy. Okay, this is good. This is a question you don't like getting asked. You know, I honestly feel like I'm a pretty open book in most cases. There aren't too many questions that I don't like or try to avoid answering. I would say that in terms of like personal relationship things, I don't 
love being super open about my romantic life, if that makes sense. Like, I'm not opposed to it. I'm just kind of, I don't know. I feel like some things need to be kept private. And so maybe when it comes to like my love life, I'm a little more closed off. I think when it comes to like past relationships I've been in and that kind of thing, I'm not opposed to talking about those experiences. But in terms of like really intimate details, I'm not the person to share about that. I just feel like some things need to be kept <laughs> private. So <laughs> next question. <laughs> okay, a question someone asks is what is your type? I, from a visual perspective, feel a little, maybe that's a question I don't like being asked, is like, I, I don't like being asked what my type is from a visual perspective. Cause then I feel like I'm excluding people or like potentially hurting people's feelings. <laughs> Um, I'll do my best to answer. I really love brown hair. I like curly hair. I like people who have a very effortless style about them. It's not that I don't want my partner to put work into the way that they look, but I really do like people who just kind of look like they just woke up like this, if that makes sense. And maybe that's just because I'm not one of those people. Like I tend to put more work into myself or feel like I have to show up a little bit more for myself where I'm like, oh, I want my partner to be kind of a bit more effortless and easy and like carefree. From a personality perspective, I can definitely answer that. So I really love someone who is consistent, of course, loyal people who have that kind of like ride or die personality where you know you can rely on them for anything and it's like you're their person and they are your person and there's really no questioning that. <laughs> this might highlight potentially an insecurity of mine, but I really don't love the whole culture of, especially within like the LGBTQ community, just, you know, everyone kind of like, even if they're in relationships, like liking each other's pictures and commenting how attractive other people are when like, you know, you're in a relationship. Like I just feel like that is off to me. It feels very much like open relationship E, And I mean, absolutely no judgment with anything I'm saying. I'm just speaking on behalf of like the way I operate. I tend to be a lot more modest and reserved when it comes to the connections that I have and the way I show up in those connections. And I just know that I am not a super, super, super flirtatious person or like outspoken type of person. Like I'm more reserved and chill with my energy. But when I do meet someone who I feel kind of meets the criteria that I have in terms of like their energy and the way that they show up. And like I said, I love like consistency and loyalty. I like kindness and compassion, people who are really funny and know how to like actually take time to try to understand me like when I when I feel like you are that type of person and I can trust you I think then it's easier for me to be like okay I can open up to you I can give you affection or compliments or praise once again I don't mean any judgment at all to anyone who is that way because we all operate differently we all need different things we all show up for people in different ways that's just how I'm attracted to people and the energy that I look for. Hopefully that somewhat answered your question. <laughs> okay, someone said, where did your interest for interiors come from? Or did you just need some furniture? You know, as a kid, I was always rearranging the furniture in my bedroom. I used to drive my parents crazy, I'm sure, because I would go into like the attic and pull out like old decor and furniture pieces and like put it in my room or take things from the living room and put it in my bedroom and vice versa. I've just always been obsessed with the idea of of curating anything in general. Like I love making beautiful things, but specifically in a home space, environment's really important to me. I love being able to take a home environment and make it something that's beautiful or evokes a certain feeling. And I don't have any training at all in this, just outside of being observant and trying to kind of learn about different interior design styles and different decor elements that do speak to me, that don't speak to me. And I'm really open to letting the interest in that whole field kind of evolve as it does. I'm having a lot of fun with my apartment here in LA. It's a really beautiful space, figuring out for myself what I do and don't like. It's kind of fun to document that. Okay, the last question I love, it's, is there something that you struggle with and how do you work through it? I'm assuming this is kind of in reference to maybe like an insecurity or something of that nature. While I have quite a few things that I do work through and deal with on a daily basis relating to my insecurities, one that I really wanna talk about is body image. As a man, I don't 
think many people speak up on this and maybe it's because maybe men don't have body image issues as much or if they do they just aren't as vocal about it even me talking about it right now i'm a little like oh what do i say this is like really awkward i have dealt with I would say body dysmorphia uh, or a form of it my entire life. I think that just part of that comes from a place of growing up in an environment where you feel not accepted. And of course, bullying comes into play with that. And uh, by the way, I'm not referring necessarily to like my family or anything, more just like the South in general. But I've always had sort of a very weird relationship with my physical body, how hard it is for me to find clothing that I think fits me right and flatters me. Of course, comparing myself to other people and maybe from an outside perspective, there are people who would argue that my body's fine and that there's nothing wrong with it. And while I do appreciate that and I've learned to love my body a lot, there's also been a really long journey of trying to become, be at peace with the way my body is and the way I see it. And you know, I'm still working through this every day having confidence in my appearance and to be honest, like this whole journey of social media has really challenged me a lot. Being on camera and seeing my face and my body can be really tricky and it's easy to like pick yourself apart and overanalyze everything. But the more I've done it, the more comfortable I've been with seeing myself. And I think that's a big part of it is that like we don't see ourselves in the same way that many other people do. We have like a specific perception of how we think we should be or should look. The more that I've seen myself on camera and the more that I've actively just looked at myself in the mirror and been like, you look good today. The outfit's great. It fits you nicely. Go out and be in the world and just be yourself because that's what people really are going to look to you for, for like, are you showing up in like a whole and complete and present way? I think in the past, I've also placed so much importance on physical image. And it's like most people you come into contact with, yeah, like they are going to acknowledge the way you look physically, but like they're really trying to just connect with you because your spirit and your talents and your energy is like intrinsically unique. I think something that's really helped me is pulling the focus away from the importance of my body or my face or my physical appearance being a certain way. Yes, I take care of myself. I'm gonna try to do my best within my control, but like, honestly, I look the way I look. <laughs> and <laughs> that's what the world is getting. I have honestly found in many cases, like I am my own worst critic. Like most of the negative perceptions of my physical appearance really have come from my brain more than even my external environment. Like, yes, I was bullied when I was younger about certain things. Like I was bullied a few times about my nose. And I remember one time in middle school, this guy told me that I had a girl face, which honestly, now that I'm older and I've grown into it, thank you. I will accept that. Looking back, I kind of think he was just trying to call me pretty. I don't know. Thank you, I guess. I would just say my advice is like, take physical appearance off the pedestal. You have so much more to offer than that. Next piece of advice is your body and your face are what they are until you change them. If you wanna get cosmetic surgery or something, I'm a huge proponent of that. If that's something you wanna do or you feel will make you happier, do what you gotta do. But until then, just try to be at peace with what you've got. And as long as you are taking care of yourself and trying to do what's healthy for you, that's what's most important. If you're working within your means and you are showing up for yourself, then just like try to be at peace with that. And then the third thing is when you have negative thoughts arise, try to like take a minute to pause and just really digest what you just thought about or said about yourself and question whether or not it's it's actually true because most of the time it's not true and it's just a thought and you are not your thoughts you are the awareness of your thoughts you know every little thing that goes through your head does not actually define you and everything that's going through your mind is definitely not what's going through every other person's mind no matter who you are what your circumstances are what you look like where you come from we really are beautiful in our own way because we are unique entirely. Once I, Ethan, am done here on earth, there will never be another one of me. There will never be another one of you. We need to show up and own that a little bit more. Like that's kind of amazing when you actually digest that and think about it. I'm just giving you guys the pep talk that I try to give myself on a daily basis. 
<laughs> and hopefully it's helpful to you. This has been such a fun video. I feel like I got a lot more raw and vulnerable throughout the video, and I really hope that you guys enjoyed it and enjoyed learning a bit more about me. I would love to learn a bit more about you, so drop a comment and let me know something about you. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video if you want to show me some love. It definitely helps me out. I've had so much fun with this and can't wait to see you guys on the next video. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.